Bernie Madoff was widely considered one of the most successful investors in the world since the 1960s. Some of his investors included director Steven Spielberg, actor Kevin Bacon, and TV personality Larry King. But who is Madoff? What is a Ponzi scheme? And how did he become the biggest thief in the history of the world? Madoff grew up in Queens, New York, with his Jewish parents and brother and sister. He lived a very normal childhood and has been described as warm and charming by some of his friends. He went to university and scraped some money together, working as a lifeguard and sprinkler installer. Madoff began his financial career in 1960 at the age of 22 and, using the $5,000 he had saved and $50,000 from his father-in-law, set up his first company of Bernard L. Madoff Investment Securities. His investment firm acted as a market maker, trading stocks and securities. Some of the firm's employees included his brother, Peter, as senior managing director, and his niece, Shana. He eventually also employed his two sons, Andrew and Mark. His seemingly bulletproof investment and hedging strategy saw growth through all market conditions and continued to baffle analysts. Madoff's reputation continued to grow as he helped form the NASDAQ Stock Exchange and was chairman for three years. As investors leapt at the chance to invest in Madoff's strategy, it was in fact a Ponzi scheme. Ponzi schemes work by providing returns to investors using money from newer investors. As long as there were new faces depositing money into Madoff's firm, he would always be able to use this to fulfil the returns for his earlier investors. These early investors raved about the performance of Madoff's fund, which brought in a steady flow of more and more investors. He targeted Jewish executives in what has become known as affinity fraud, as the investors felt they could trust someone with similar values to their own. Madoff never published his financial statements, as the secrecy around his investments only served to add to his reputation, and he became even more lucrative to investors. His modest but steady returns appeared too realistic and conservative to be a scam. Investment analysts were skeptical during the 90s, but the US Securities and Exchange Commission never found proof of any illegal activity. Financial analyst Harry Markopoulos was one of the first to raise questions about the legitimacy of Madoff's strategy. But again, in 2001, the SEC failed to find evidence of any wrongdoing. Investors continued to flock until the financial crisis of 2008, when clients requested a total of $7 billion in withdrawals. Unfortunately, Madoff did not have this sort of capital, as he had already paid it out to his earlier investors. In 2009, he was sentenced to 150 years for the fraud that robbed investors of around $65 billion. The judge sentencing Madoff described him as extraordinarily evil. Madoff claims to have worked alone throughout the scam, but the true number of his knowing accomplices remains a mystery. In an unusual turn of events, Madoff's two sons, who worked at the company, both passed away within a few years of their father's incarceration. Mark committed suicide in 2010, while Andrew died from lymphoma in 2014. In 2013, the Department of Justice launched the Madoff Victim Fund to help groups and individuals recoup the money lost through the scam. The fund's total currently sits at around $3.5 billion. And that's how it happened.